Hey everybody. Just down here getting the lights turned out. And I have my camera in my hand. There is no glare on this tank and my tenopoma is still out and swimming about. So all three of those came together nicely and we'll get a little bit of a look at my tenopoma acuterostra or African spotted leaf fish as it's sold by PetSmart. I can't tell whether it's my imagination or not, but this fish definitely seems to be less outgoing and active now that my synodontist died. My regular viewers will know that uh, I had a synodontist in this tank for many years. They grew up together and they used to more or less pal around together. I always thought of them as my odd couple. And not too long ago, I lost my synodontist. I'm not really sure what happened. I think it may have gotten a little bit of uh, gravel picked up with its food and basically blocked up its digestive tract. And so we don't have that ton of, I mean, the uh, synodontist with us anymore. And ever since then, this somewhat reclusive fish has become a lot more reclusive. And... More so than being reclusive, it's become a lot less active. Now, in nature, these fish probably aren't very active to begin with. Their method of hunting is ambush. You know, they just basically hang out in the bushes and look like leaves right up until something swims over top of them, and then they explode into life for a brief instant get a meal, and then they go back to just kind of hanging out, not doing a whole lot of anything. And so you would think that that's fairly normal behavior, and possibly it is. Possibly the behavior that we saw before was because the synodontist was in there. Maybe the synodontist was somehow annoying, you know, the, the tenopoma there, and the tenopoma was always just moving around the tank trying to sort of get a little bit of peace and quiet, as it were. Maybe what we're seeing now is much more normal behavior where it just sort of sulks around and hides in the bushes and doesn't do a whole lot of anything. Again, it was never really an outgoing fish. It doesn't just hang out in the open like the way angelfish do. But it used to spend time, you know, kind of cruising around the tank a little more. It was much more, I won't say aggressive, but I'll say outgoing at feeding time. It would definitely come out of the... Uh, bushes much more easily and come over to this end of the tank where I feed everybody. That's why you can see uh, everybody else is down here waiting. They think they're going to get their second dinner for some reason. I don't know why. It's possible that there may be a little bit of food left over. I put some floating pellets in there tonight. Did you see the bubbles coming out of the gills there? These uh, are labyrinth fish as they're known, because they have the labyrinth organ in their head. They're related closely to the gouramis. In fact, one of the common names for these is leopard gourami, even though they're not true gouramis. And they are also uh, related to uh, the betta fish, the fighting fish, the Siamese fighting fish. So all very similar. They all have that labyrinth organ, which allows them to gulp air from the surface, and then they can actually pump air into that organ and it actually, I don't want to say it acts like a lung, but if I had to make an analogy in a crude sort of simplistic way, it would almost act like a lung, uh, helping them to absorb more oxygen than might necessarily just be in the water naturally. And it allows them to actually live in very low oxygen water. They can actually live in stagnant water, provided they've got access to the surface. So that's why they are referred to as labyrinth fish. Really, really cool looking fish though. I'm really, really glad I got it. And this is one that when this one finally passes away, and it probably won't be too terribly much longer, it's already probably over six, but maybe not quite seven years old yet. And that's well within the, you know, I think six to 10 is their normal lifespan or something. So who knows, this one might be one of those ones that lives 10 years or 11, 12, 13 years. Maybe I've got years left in it, but We'll see. Anyway, whenever it does move on, I will definitely be getting another one of these, and hopefully it will have a similar 
personality as this one because this one's just been fantastic it's you know i bought it when i very first got you know into fish keeping didn't really know much about it had no idea it was going to get as big as it did uh, i thought it would be fine to spend its whole life in a 40 breeder and i found out after about two years that the 40 breeder was getting kind of small and it has been over here in this 125 ever since likewise with the synodontist i got them at the same time and they were both very small and i thought both of them would have been fine in my 40 breeder and as i said both of these within a year and a half or so maybe two years tops and i had to move them into something much larger now i didn't have to jump right up to a 125 you know but a 40 was way too small i would say a 55 would be the bare minimum you would want to have for a tenopoma like this they do get pretty uh, substantial. I know it's kind of hard to get an idea of scale there, but that's probably a solid seven to eight inches if we, you know, total length all the way to the tip of the tail. And I swear the thing's as thick as a brick. It's probably an inch and a half thick. So it's a lot of fish. It's a, it's a hefty bio load. And remember, when you're talking about putting a fish in a tank, when you when you're thinking about the size of the tank it needs to go in, it's not only how much room does the fish need to swim around it's how much bio load does that animal produce even if it's a fish like this one that doesn't need a lot of swimming around room it's a big animal you know you're still putting a big animal in a small tank and that puts a really really high bio load on the tank and that's something that needs to be taken into consideration when you're thinking about getting these you know more substantial fish in you know reasonably small tanks so i would say comfortably you would want to put one of these in maybe a 75 or larger you know at full grown if you want to start out in something smaller than that that's fine but you need to be thinking down the road to probably you know a 75 for these to be you know a good adequate size tank and i was going to mention but it's gone now i wanted to talk about that loach that was lying on the floor in the back of the tank But it's no longer back there. I just wanted to point out that that's how loaches sleep. Probably do a separate video about that in its own right. Uh, come in here one of these times and catch the loaches sleeping. I know many a new loach owner comes in and has a brief heart attack when they think they found their loach dead on the bottom of the tank only to realize it's sleeping. And it takes quite a while to get used to it because they really do just lie on the bottom of the tank. And they'll even, if you've got enough uh, water flow and current, You'll see them rocking and, you know, drifting around in the current half the time. So they really can come across as looking dead when they're sleeping like that. So I just wanted to point that out. So that's about it. He's going back into hiding. We've gotten a pretty good look at the tank with everybody swimming around in there. I absolutely love my rainbow shark. If you're not familiar with what these fish are and you're wondering, oh, they're actually starting to show some spawning behavior. That's the first I've seen of that. These are albino millennial, uh, millennium rainbows. And then the other bigger rainbows that we saw here, these are Marcy rainbow fish. And those have been in the tank for many years as well. Uh, the Marcy are a hybrid. I don't know how available they are, how easily you could find them. That one right there is an Australian rainbow fish. It's just sort of an oddball that got in this tank. Um, but the Marcy's are hybrids. The millennials are not. The sort of yellowy looking ones are the females, and then these really vibrant uh, orange ones are the male albino millennials. So there you go. And last but not least is one of my last remaining, or the last remaining, female Congo Tetra. Uh, she's been in the tank for years and years and years as well. So not really going to add to the school of Congo Tetras. We're just going to wait till she does her thing. And that probably won't be too much longer either. So there you go, everybody. On that cheerful and happy note, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. You never know what you're going to get with me. You don't want to miss anything I got coming up. And then don't forget, of course, this one here is my 125-gallon tank. So thanks again, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.